Assalamualaikum viewers. I am Noreen Fatma. I am giving a lecture about the homeostasis. That is chapter two of the tenth class. Let's start. First of all, first of all, I will tell you about the meaning. What is the meaning of homeostasis? It is composed of two words. One is homeo, other one is stasis. Homeo means same, and stasis means stranding. So altogether, it, it means staying the same. Actually, homeostasis means it is the organism internal environment, which refers to the condition inside an organism condition remain more or less constant despite changes pH and temperature in the outside environment. Now I'm going to discuss the definition. What is homeostasis? The definition of homeostasis is a condition in which the internal environment of the body remain relatively constant despite changes in the external environment. The, the examples of homeostasis will be the maintenance of body temperature and the level of glucose in the blood. So the process involved in is thermoregulation, second, osmoregulation, and third one is excretion. Now the question arises, what is thermoregulation? Thermoregulation is the maintenance of internal body temperature. It's called thermoregulation. As the name indicated, thermo means heat or temperature. The enzyme of body work best at particular temperature. This particular temperature is actually called the optimum temperature. You are well aware the optimum temperature of the body is 37 degrees centigrade. It means all the enzyme works at 37 degrees centigrade. So the example, the pepsin work at acidic pH, that is two at 37 degrees centigrade. Pepsin is the stomach enzyme. Now second is the process of osmoregulation. What is osmoregulation? It is the maintenance of the, um, maintenance of the amount of water and salt in body fluids. So there are two type of body fluids. One is the blood and other one is the tissue fluids. So you are well aware the relative amount of water and salt and salts in the body fluids and inside cells controlled by the process of diffusion and osmosis. So relatively, so there are two processes involved for osmoregulation to maintain the osmotic balance in the body fluid. Number one is the diffusion and other one is the osmosis. In diffusion, the concentration gradient are involved, higher the movement of molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration, osmosis, the movement of water. Uh, so both of these processes are involved to maintain the osmotic balance in the body fluid. So these are essential for functioning the cell functioning of cells. Uh, these, uh, so you will recall the concept of tonicity. Uh, there are three processes. One is hypertonic, other one is the isotonic solution, and third one is the hypotonic solution. In hypotonic solution, the movement of water inside the cell. So cell become turgid. In isotonic solution, uh, the cells remain the same size because there is an osmotic balance in the internal envir environment as well as in the out uh, external environment. While in case of hypertonic solution involves the movement of water molecule outside the cell. So the cell become flaccid. Now the third process is excretion. What is excretion? It is also a process of homeostasis. In this processes, the metabolic waste are eliminated from body to maintain the internal condition at equilibrium. 
So this picture explains the process of excretion in plants as well as in animals. In case of plant, the removal of extra water from the body taking place, extra oxygen from the plant body taking place through different parts of the plant. In case of animals, there are uh, nitrogenous waste material which are eliminated from the body of animals according to the nature of the environment, according to the habitat of the environment where they live. If they are, so there are three forms of nitrogenous waste product. One is in the form of ammonia, which is secreted by the fishes as indicated in the picture. And second is the urea, which is secreted by these animals, which are mentioned in this picture. And third one is the uric acid. Okay. In case of uric acid crystals, they are eliminated from the, uh, from the body of these animals just such as bird, cockroach, because they are highly, they conserve the water within the body according to the requirement. Now we will discuss the homeostasis in plant. Plant responds to en environmental changes and keeps their internal condition constants. That is the homeostasis by applying different mechanism. Number one, homeostasis of water. Number two, the homeostasis of chemicals. The chemicals involve oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the nitrogenous material. The first is the removal of extra carbon dioxide <coughs> and oxygen. Excuse me. During daytime, what happens? The carbon dioxide produced during cellular respiration that is utilized in photosynthesis. And hence, it is not a waste product. At night, what happened? The surplus, it becomes surplus because there is no utilization of carbon dioxide. It is removed from the tissue cells by the process of diffusion, as I have told you, this process. In leaves and young stem, carbon dioxide escape out through the stomata. In this picture, both day and night are mentioned that during daytime, the process of photosynthesis occurs in which carbon dioxide, they are absorbed by the plant uh, through the leaves. Yeah. And all in case of, at, in case of night, what happened? Carbon dioxide is released because the surplus carbon dioxide is released. So during daytime, the plant absorb carbon dioxide and expel oxygen. This process is called photosynthesis. During night time, the plant absorb oxygen and expel carbon dioxide. This process is called respiration. In young roots, what happens? The root hairs, the carbon dioxide diffuses through the general root surface, especially through the root hairs. While in case of oxygen, is produced in mesophyll cells only during daytime as a byproduct of photosynthesis. After its utilization in cellular respiration, the leaf cells remove the extra amount of oxygen through the stomata. So what is stomata? That is actually the opening present in between the guard cell. What is guard cell? Guard cell is actually the modification of uh, epidermal cells. So this chemical equation involved, as mentioned in picture, is the uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen in the presence of sunlight. They will bring about the process of uh, photosynthesis and they will produce the glucose and release the oxygen. This is happened in during photosynthesis, while in case of respiration, what happened? Glucose is broken down by the oxygen and energy is released and uh, they are from water as well as carbon dioxide. So this is happened during respiration. 
and this a uh, huge amount of energy is released which are utilized to help the plant growth now the removal of extra water what happens plants obtain water from soil and it is also produced in the body during cellular respiration now the large amount of water which is absorbed in the cell and the cell become turgid so turgid condition is called the turgidity so what happens the extra water they are removed from the surface of the plant body especially through the leaves and especially from the leaves that is the transpiration what is transpiration transpiration is the removal of extra water from the surface of the leaf at night transpiration usually does not occur because most plant have their stomata closed so what happen if there is a high water content in the soil water enters the root and is accumulated in the xylem tissues the example some plants such as grasses they will force this water through special pores present at the leaf tips or edges and forms drops so the appearance of drop of water on the tips or edges of the leaf is called lutation so the question arise here what is gotation what is respiration transpiration what is respiration what does mean the turgidity such type of question is asked as a short question so not do not confuse gotation with the dew drops gotation is not to be confused with dew what is dew which dew which condenses from the atmosphere onto the plant surface and transpiration is the loss of water from plant surface in the form of vapors as mentioned in this fig gotation in different plants now third one is the removal of other metabolic waste plants deposit metabolic waste in their body as an harmless insoluble material this harmless insoluble material examples is calcium oxalate oxalate calcium oxalate is deposited in the form of crystal in different <coughs> parts of plant body in the leaves and stem of many plants example as in as in tomato which is mentioned in this picture calcium oxalate needles in a leaf cells <coughs> excuse me the removal of excretory excretory product is a secondary function of leaf fall this removal of excretory product is called the excretophore if the leaves are not shed the calcium oxalate crystals remains as harmless crystal in the leaf in trees which shed their leaves yearly the excretory product are removed from the body during leaf fall <coughs> excuse me different waste materials in plants they are actually in the form of resin gums latex and mucilage they that are removed by some plants are resins as happened in coniferous plant uh, trees in the form of gums as in kicker in the form of latex as in rubber plants in the form of mucilage as in lady finger and in carnivorous plant resin drops are seen in picture mucilage drops on a cut tree and from a carnivorous plant is seen in picture now the next topic is the osmotic adjustment in plant how does plant adjust themselves according to the environment 
and this adjustment is based on osmosis that's why it is called osmotic adjustment in plants so on the basis of the available amount of water and soil plants are divided into three groups number one hydrophytes means water plant xerophytes means dry plants halophytes whose habitat are in <coughs> salty water whose habitats are salty water hallo means soils now what is hydrophytes hydrophytes are completely or partially submerged in fresh water number 1 do not they do not face the problem of water shortage because already in the surrounding plenty of water are present develop mechanism for the removal of extra water from their cells so now the question what are the adaptive features adaptive features is the characteristic they adapt themselves to maintain the or to maintain or the to settle down in this environment in this aquatic environment number 1 the adaptive features or the characteristic of this plant having the broad leaves with a large number of stomata on their upper surface to excrete large amount of water to excrete excess amount of water from the plant body second the helps them to remove the extra amount of water the most common examples of such plant is water lily next there are so many adaptive features of hydrophytes plant as mentioned in this slide hydrophytes are plants that have adapted to living either partially or fully submerged in water examples are water lily whose botanical name is nymphaea alba it includes large thin floating leaves number 1 secondly elongated petioles leaf stalk reduced root system aerial flowers litter or no executicle poorly developed xylem tissues litter or no lignin in vascular tissue few sclerids or fibers so there are more than adaptive features are mentioned in the slide so you can select third one is the xerophytes as called live in dry environment so their adaptive features number 1 they possess thick waxy cuticle over the epidermis why this waxy cuticle are present over the epidermis or over the epidermal layer to reduce the amount of water from internal tissue to reduce the water loss from internal tissue so secondly they have less number of stomata to restrict the water inside the plant tissues or to reduce the rate of transpiration plants have developed roots to absorb maximum amount of water from the soil next some xerophytic plants they have a special parenchymal cells special parenchyma cells these are the living cells present in stem or roots in which what they did they store large amount large quantity of water this storage make their stems or root wet number 1 secondly juicy so such type of cells is called succulent organ so such type of parenchymal cells is called succulent organ now the questions in the form of short question can be taken from this slide what is meant by succulent organ they are juicy roots wet examples of the xerophytes are cacti their singular is cactus as mentioned in this picture third one is the halophytes 
water handovers. Especially if they live in a seawater and are adapted to salty environment. The mechanism involved here, the salt enter in the bodies of such plants due to their higher concentration in the seawater. Because seawater is actually the salty water. So on the other hand, water tends to move out of their cell into the hypertonic seawater. So there is an osmotic adjustment. How does the osmotic adjustment taking place is through the process of active transport that is against the concentration gradient from lower concentration to higher concentration so they will due to this active transport the salt enter into the cell they move and hold large amount of salts in vacuoles so such type of mechanism involved here in the halophytes Salts are not allowed to move out through the semi-permeable membrane of vacuoles. The sap of vacuole, sap is actually the vacuolar water, which is composed of water and salts. They remain even more hypertonic than seawater. That is happened due to active transport. In this way, water does not move out of the salt. Many seagrasses are included in this group of plant. Now, in this slide, you will compare both adaptive features of xerophytic plant as well as the halophytes. So there are more than one. So you can select any one. Number one, reduce in xerophytic adaptation, reduced and whole leaves are present, while in case of halophytes adaptation, altered flowering uh, schedules as mentioned in this deck. And xerophytic adaptation, thicker waxy cuticle as mentioned in the previous slide. While in case of halophytes, the sequestration of ions in vacuoles, which are happened due to active transport. In case of xerophytic adaptations, stomata and beads with hairs, while here the toxic ions to the leaves. So lower growth to ground and restricting entry of ions at roots in halophytic adaptation. So that is all about of this topic. How does homeostasis take place in plant and their osmotic adjustment? Now the related short question as mentioned in this slide. You can prepare this short question by observing the answer in these previous slides. And uh, thank you once again.